Podcast is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the writing day to all of you in authoring and book marketing and whatever we're doing in your publishing journey at this point in time. There is, um, every once in a while I get questions about people or I am looking at someone's manuscript that comes in that they want some help with and here's, here's what goes through my head. You've got a great idea. You know, I love your energy. I love your passion. I love your enthusiasm but your writing sucks. So I, I, I think it might be a good idea if we get someone in who can help you to write it. And, you know, I can do that, but there's also other people out there, and I think we should explore that. And for your genre, I could like re- would like to recommend someone who I think would be the appropriate fit. Well, today's show is all about finding the appropriate fit, talk about different genres, And what we're going to be deep diving into this thing called ghost writing. Is there a ghost writer in your midst? Is there a ghost writer in your sky? With me is Mark Graham. He's a critically acclaimed author who's been writing and editing professionally since the late 80s. His company, Mark Graham Communications, and the team of highly published writers and editors have collaborated with clients from three continents. So ghostwriting is that very special collaboration, and that's why you need kind of a team at times. It's often not a solo venture between an author and a ghostwriter that brings to life your book in a variety of genres. They could be novels. It could be biographies. It could be a biz book, a self-help book, a book about health care, nutrition, I mean, a variety of things. So if that's anything that interests you, you want to stay tuned through this tower, this hour. And with me right now is Mark. Welcome to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, Mark. Well, thank you so much, Judith, for having me. I appreciate it and I look forward to speaking with you about ghostwriting. So you've been writing as long as I have. My first published book was in 81. And, um, and you know, and, and I've said this many times on the air. No one ever told me that books breed more books. Um, and, and, and author. So, so I, I guess one of the questions I might have for you is how many of the authors have you worked with, um, that have actually come back and said, let's, let's do another book. Oh, quite a few. I mean, we've had numerous clients we've written or you collaborated on well over 400 books and a good number of those have been people who've come back and want to either do a follow-up novel uh, mm-hmm. We've had a lot of people who have done business books who have wanted to come back and do that second version of the book uh, or add to the content that they had previously. So that happens on a regular basis. And um, and I think the reason is because the publishing world today allows people to get their books out there and, you know, create an audience uh, that wants to see more of what they've been working on. Mm-hmm. And, and Mark, have, have you ever taken, uh, let's say, a business book? Because uh, I work with a lot of people who, you know, who write in the business genre, that that you can, um, with your creativity, morph into a kind of a fiction book, or do people come with you with a fiction idea and it's just messy and you fix it? Well, you know, generally speaking, what will happen there is that uh, while we'll take very often take a, a biography or an idea behind the biography. And that kind of idea, we've done a lot of biographies. We've probably written 150 biographies with people around the country. And we have had on occasion where people will want to take that biographical idea and make it into a novel based upon a true story. That's that's a very common thing. And that's a very popular genre right now as well. So Mm -hmm. that's a a, a situation that happens quite frequently. And, uh, And it works very well because, you know, there's a, 
there's always a story. I mean, everybody's biography or memoir has got that powerful story to it. And uh, converting it to a novel is something that we do, you know, fairly regularly. And uh, and it protects the privacy of the, you know, the biographical story as well. So you and your team can add the juice <laughs> to sometimes biographies. It. can be a little flat. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, you know, what we do with biographies, much like a novel, is we try to take the right, the, the viewer or the reader right into the scenes from a person's life and really recreate that scene with dialogue and with color and so forth. So that's the idea. I and mean, you've heard this term where, you know, you don't want to tell the story as much as you want to show the story. And that's a, that's a huge part of writing a biography. It's also a huge part of if you have a business book going and and somebody wants to give an example or an anecdotal material, you want the reader to be part of that story, even in that context. So that's a huge part of the writing process for us is showing the, the you know showing the story rather than telling the story. And then when you look at a book, sometimes when people are trying to think, um, I, I I just came across a book recently. Um, that was uh, newly published and that the author tried to, as I said, a fiction, to interject uh, factoids. And, and I think that's the best word for it, factoids, sure. Um, sure. throughout at the opening of, of the chapters. It was, it's more, it was like a, uh, it was supposed to be a mystery book, um, but it had a cause with it. And um, I have to tell you, I I became really disjointed as I was trying to look at it. Um, and and um, I I think the story I get to, I got the story totally, but I I felt like I had a schizophrenic book in front of me that they didn't know which <laughs> you know, way to go. That's a problem. I think sometimes people want to they want to tell a story, but they also want to put themselves and their message into that story, and that can be very tricky. I think if the story doesn't doesn't take the message and, and work it within the story itself and they try to interject pieces that are, you know, either factoids or, you know, some kind of, you know, philosophical message or something, that can be very disconcerting. And really I we would always say to somebody, if the story can't carry that message, you know, then we've got a we've got a problem. You don't want to just stop all of a sudden and start interjecting yourself or your mm -hmm. message into a book. It was every chapter. It was just, yeah, it was every chapter. Yeah. There was 30 chapters, and all of a sudden, oh, now I've got something that was taken from the Denver Post. Now I've got something that was taken from this, and I'm going, what the hell? I, I, I wish they had <laughs> done it, interjected, taken those stories, and even woven them within them. Um, and then, yeah. as the author's note, written a really call-to-action epilogue, to it that you know to combat what was going on in there and where for anyone that's caught in this situation victimized where they can go to help that would be my choice but maybe i'm wrong you know maybe i'm getting long in the tooth huh <laughs> well i actually i think that i think you want your characters to carry your message and, and your story to carry your message and, and you can interject things with dialogue and with conversations between people or, you know, situations that occur. I completely agree with you. I think you don't want that that pause in the middle of, of your story to interject yourself into the piece and, and, you know, interject your message. You want the story to carry that. And, and you have a good point there about perhaps at the end of the book, you've got a place where you can, you know, reinforce that and revisit that with your reader. But that's got to be separate from the story, at least in my mind. But but it is. I get it. It's part of the story. I mean, that's the foundation. It's the weaver of what, you know, this issue is. But I just thought right. anyway, it just and I pushed through it to go through it. And then but by the point is, I didn't care about the story anymore. I mean, which is and not where you want to be that's left. A huge problem. That's yeah, a huge yeah. problem, isn't it? That's yeah, it is a huge problem. Really Okay, so let's let's jump into this thing called ghost writing. And we have a couple of minutes before our first break. But so give me a, a, give our give our listeners a good definition. Well, I mean, ghost writing is really that that you know taking either an idea or a story or a concept uh, that uh, in our case, you know, we we might call them a client to begin with, but really they are the author, and they come to us and 
they've got an idea or something that they want to flesh out into a full book. And that's exactly what we do. We take their idea or their their journal or them you know whatever they happen to have that they want us to work <laughs> off of their box of notes full... <laughs> their box yeah, of notes they're, maybe they're, yeah yeah there could be a box of notes we've got a, a gentleman right now working uh, on a piece going back to the 1960s and it's based upon his journals during this bike ride that he took mm-hmm. and we're taking that and making that into a biographical piece that also includes photographs and and you know newspaper articles and you know that's a pretty good example of where he came to us and said this is my idea and this is what I have so far and we're now in the process of making that into a you know a, really it's a memoir because it takes place mm-hmm. over 30 days but that's really the whole idea is to take that and bring it to you know fruition but at the same time honoring what that what the author wants in terms of a voice and a tone and style and, and that sort of thing. And, mm-hmm. and that's that collaborative piece that's so important to us. So, so it's, it, it could be their box of notes they come into. It could be a journal. It could be a really a rough, 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 rough draft. Um, their sure. first pitch of Definitely. it, you're going to come in and kiss it and make it well, so to speak. <laughs> That's true. I, I mean, that's a really good way to put it because some people will just have the basis for an idea or a character in mind, or they have a, you know, they have their family's history or something like that. And we'll write the book from scratch, essentially. Mm-hmm. We also have had many clients will come to us with a finished or partially finished manuscript that needs to be edited, developmentally edited, or have ghost writing applied to it to, you know, bring mm-hmm. it to that highest level of presentation. That's you know, there's all kinds of different models, and uh, you know, we've worked on them. Uh, you know, from very from scratch, or we. Some people will come to us with an outline, you know, and they'll say, "Well, what about this?" And we'll use that for the, you know, chapter headings and so forth. And then, of course, I've mentioned this previously, where the real key is gathering the information together, and that's the whole key to starting a project. And whether that's done with a thing that's already written down, a material or research. Or in almost all cases, we do interviews too. Okay, so let's let's line. let's take a break and let's come back to okay. and talk about that interviewing section. I'm really interested in that. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. We're talking ghostwriting today, and my guest is Mark Graham. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with it. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com 
and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All righty, it's Ghost Writing Day here at uh, Ghost Writing in the Sky with Mark Graham of Mark Graham Communications. And we really are looking at the overall concept of ghost writing. So, um, and, and I want to get into the time involved, uh, the, and it's and a lot of authors to be writers to be don't recognize it's it's not just a few hours. We're talking mega mega hours, um, and that I want to get into time factor. I want to get into cost factor. Um, I want to get into the process. I think that's very important. So let's 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 kiss on the process, Mark. Um, so well, I mean, the, the, excuse me, I'm sorry. Go ahead, jump in. Well, the process really begins when you know we first, you know, obviously make contact with, or a client or an author comes to us and they tell us about the idea that they're working on it, that they're thinking about working on, it. and that can be, you know, it can be a novel or a a biography, it can be a business book or a, you know, self-help book, like you mentioned, health books, we've done a lot of those. And that idea is something that we start to discuss and we just dis- discuss everything from the audience that it's they're tapping into that we talk about, you know, what the length of the book is going to be. That's a very important factor when it comes to a business book or uh, a self-help book. You know, we don't want it too long. We don't want it too short. Uh, we, we Talk, and then we really say to them, okay, now how are we going to gather this information together for the book? And, and as I mentioned uh, previously, almost all the books we work on uh, are really dedicated to face-to-face interviews if possible, but certainly a lot of phone and Skype interviews. And those, uh, when we do a face-to-face interview uh, on a book, it's usually over a two-day period. That's how we get launched on a project generally. And those two days allow us to gather enough information to really start outlining the story and even begin writing the first draft of the book. So that is how we actually get launched. Once we start writing the book, what's most important, obviously, is finding a voice and a tone and style that fits that that project that really fits the author and and their you know their story and their message. And that's something we spend a lot of time on because we want the the author and they want on our end myself and my team to really be excited about that voice and that carries through for the entire book so you know if you have a 200 page book you're talking about a project that's going to take really you know it's a hundred hundreds of hours to go into the writing of a book and you know that from your experience from writing Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's just one of those things that you cannot you can't really slow down or, or shorten the process. I mean, you want the book to be as special as it can be. And, and you know, writers know that it takes a lot of hours to put together a book. And, and once the uh, author and the, the client, in this case, gets a handle on that, then they, they, you know, they get into the process and they realize it's going to take, you know, anywhere from four to eight months to write a book and uh, for it to go through two drafts of, uh, you know, the two draft process that it goes through. So in the process of writing, and let's say one of your writers is working on uh, the next great American novel. Okay, let's just sure. say that's that's uh, coming. I, I, uh, and I like is that. yeah, yeah, and and also is it is there an, is it easier? I don't know. If easier is the right word to use, Mark. Um, is it easier to do a straight like business book versus a full blown novel? Well, you know, as a ghost, as a ghost, as a ghost, uh, you know, I would say that it really kind of depends on the, you know, which member of my team we pick and so forth, because we really try to, you know, there are people who are, have a more specialty in, in the writing of a business book versus a novel. And, 
and so forth. And I, I think that it's interesting because all of the books that we write have this component of storytelling in them. So even when you're doing a business book and you've got a, a concept that you're trying to put forward with a with you know your reader and you know these are my lessons in leadership or these are my lessons in motivation or whatever it happens to be there's almost always anecdotal material or examples that play into that so in a lot of ways presenting those examples and those anecdotal pieces uh it's somewhat similar to when you're writing a novel in a sense that you still got to do it with color and with readability i mean that's the that's the case with any book you you know we write, any book we work on, it has to be very readable. It has to be entertaining. If it if it's a business book, it has to be instructive. But it has all of those pieces to it because you're always trying to get the reader to read from one page to the next and from one chapter to the to the next with enthusiasm, if you will. And that that's a really big part about it is, you know, you want the reader to be really involved in the book and, and involved in the outcome, and that's. You know, that's a novel, but that's also in a lot of ways, you know, what the business writer is trying to do as well is get that person engaged in their in their principles and in their tools, if you will. So. Well, and as I said, if um, if you want the page turner, you don't want to deliver a book that's schizophrenic, which you and I were talking about exactly. um, yeah. on, the, on the, the kickoff um, on those you know areas. often. You know how often do uh, people will stop reading a book, you know, right? You know, I mean, they'll read it for a little bit and they'll just stop. I mean, we all do that and it's yep. because it's not entertaining or it's not yep. well written. And, and, you know, those are key components to any kind of book that you write. It could be a health book. I mean, if it's not well written and well delivered and the reader's not into it, they'll just stop reading it. And that's a big part of the ghostwriting process is making sure you're delivering a presentation that's very readable. It's got that uh, sense to it that leads the reader from one page to the next. And, and, you know, that that goes for any kind of book out there. And uh, you don't want your reader stopping, you know, after 10 pages and going, I can't read this. So, you know, that's that's something where, you know, as a ghostwriter, you know, the team of that I have, um, uh, you know, my team, they're very professional people. They're all highly acclaimed writers. And they know that they've got to write a piece that is, you know, going to not only deliver the the author's message and their story, but make it so the readers engage page to page. That's just the whole. That's you know that's the bottom line of the writing process. It it, it is the bottom line. I mean, it's it's critical. And I think the other thing is that you know I always talk about how essential it is that your uh, your editor, when you have an editor, let's just say you wrote the book, you know, it goes along and you're moving in the editor and the editor doesn't take over it and make it their voice. It's got it when they edit, uh, it's got to maintain the author's voice that has got to be in there. So let, let's talk. Can we can we talk about voice a little bit? How do you determine um, the author's voice or does it matter? Maybe it doesn't matter in the storytelling I mean, in fiction, but help me out here. Yeah, I, I think the voice is a really key component for us. I, I think that if you're, if, if somebody comes to you with an idea for a novel, I mean, first of all, that whole process of determining, you know, what type of book is it? Is it a thriller? Mm-hmm. Is it a mystery? Is it mm-hmm. a mainstream piece? And then basically, when you're working with a, a client or an author, you really want to tap into who they are as a person you know, what what their likes are, what their dislikes are, and make sure that when you're putting that out, you know, in terms of the writing and the voice that you created, that it fits them. And that's really an important piece. But at the same time, it's not a reflection of how they talk or, or their, you know, their, you know, their, how, how they speak. That's not really what a voice is. The voice is, for a written piece, is completely different than the way somebody speaks, obviously. But mm-hmm. yet it's still a reflection of that that person. And and if whether it's a novel or a business book, you know, or a memoir, mm-hmm. you know, you still want to have that component that when somebody reads it, they go, OK, yeah, this reflects the author and, you know, this reflects who they are. And and that's a really key thing. And I think getting to know the client, getting to know the author is a 
a really important piece. And we spend a lot of time doing that because the more interactive the book, the more the author is engaged in that process week to week, the better the book is. And certainly the more fun it is to work on. Mm. You know, there one of my uh, a, a series, the fiction series I came across years and years ago was uh, Robert Tannenbaum's books. And they were sure. fun. You know, they had they were cheeky. They were fun sure. um, and all that. Then, it, then I discovered he his uh, it was his brother or one of his in-laws, some connection um, was actually his ghost, which I didn't know. Oh. So I tracked down who, you know, he, he had identified the name and that I bought several of the books because I so enjoyed Tannenbaum's book. I hated this. <laughs> I hated the author's real <laughs> voice. <laughs> uh, that's, 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 you know, it's, it's amazing how how uh, important the editor is uh, to a finished book and, and how important the you know, the ghostwriter is to the author's book. And it's amazing how many books go through this process. I mean, it's not just, you know, people who say they can't write. There's a lot of people who have a skill in writing that still collaborate with a a ghostwriter or a really, you know, good editor to make sure that that piece comes out the best it is. It's it's not, that's just sort of the nature of the publishing world these days. There's this collaborative piece that goes on and and, you know, that's what takes it to that next level and so forth. So, you know, I, I encourage people to be open about that. And, you know, you and I as writers go through the same thing where we have people that, you know, give us feedback and give us, you know, either editorial comments or those kind of things. And, and that's important. And, uh, you know, I try to tell people that it's that doesn't diminish what you're doing. And it actually enhances what you're doing. Uh, and that's that's a, a amen literally here, <laughs> and and that's what they should they sure. should be that's what the team comes in they they complement they augment um, and they they start mirroring you on that so that's what's really essential here and I think all of you need to understand that all right we're going to take another quick break and let's come back into I want to do a redirect come back to the to the hours what's some of the costs involved. What's some of the hiccups and what's some of the mistakes that that people typically do when they're pursuing looking for someone to assist them and be a ghostwriter? It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. We're talking with Mark Graham of Mark Graham Communications today. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need. Need to maximize your book's potential, color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 3226 1106 Design. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask coming up you'll hear more about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith briles all right with me is mark graham and we're talking about kind of one of the um you hear about it but it's it's more hidden actually i have another colleague of mine who has gone through a ghost writing school mark which i didn't know there was a ghost writing school but she has gone through a very extensive you well, there you go um a nine month nine month course in uh working with ghost writing and and things and um, and, and doing the transition of her voice. But, you know, one of the things that you talked about, and I'm going to come back to this, uh, a book could take four to eight months, all right? And exactly. that, you know, exactly. a lot of people, yep, a lot of people think, and I'm telling you, people, at short time, to have a really complete book um, in fiction. I, as, a, as a writer myself, and not my skill is nonfiction writing, um, but that I'd, when I see a fiction book, I can go in and help juice it up and fix it. But to do it from scratch, that's not my thing. It's not my, it's not my skill right. set. It's not in my wheelhouse. And to some of the wild, uh, you know, I was going to say wild ass. I guess I can't say that. Oh, so some of the wild, yes, I did say it. Some of the, some yes, of the wild, <laughs> uh, yeah, some of the wild ideas that people come up with, I am in awe of their creativity. I, I don't have that gene that gets some of these these plots and these things. And I marvel at the skill of the fiction writers in doing that. Now, I can I, once I see them, I can figure out where we're going here really quickly. Exactly. And, and some exactly. of the oddball things that I can help add to it, to add what I call juice um, along the way. But the, the, but the initiation, that seeding, is a marvelous talent that the fiction authors bring to the party and go with. And I suspect, I I was going to say, I suspect when you sit down with an author who has an idea for a novel that you probably are just thinking, whoa, where'd that idea come from sometimes? Absolutely. It's it's really amazing too. And then, of course, then sort of the hard work begins in a sense, because then what you have to figure out, and this sounds so you know, so obvious, but you really have to figure out scene to scene, how do you take this idea, you know, create a full blown story that has these plot points, beginning, middle and end, you Mm -hmm. know, how this character or characters flow through the story. I mean, that's all part of that getting down and doing the hard work part about it, you know, where you're figuring this all out. We almost always will put together a fairly detailed outline for whatever type of book we're writing, whether it's a novel or a biography, you know, a business book. We try to have that working model so that the, the you know, the author and the, the client can look at that and go, okay, I see where we're going to go, and they can add their perspective to that. But that's really the nuts and bolts when you now have this, 
you know, and it could be a 10 page outline. And then each chapter ends up running, you know, 10 to 15 pages, say, and, you know, all of that is bringing to life that idea that the person comes to, uh, comes to you with. And, and I'm always very impressed with some of the, you know, pieces that people come to and their concepts and their stories. And it, it's exciting to see because, then you tap into their their passion that they have for their story. That's such a key component is you've got the passion for your story or your or your concept or your you know the inspiration that you're putting behind it. Then we tap into that and that really helps bring out a special book, if if you know what I'm saying there. Absolutely. Oh, and I love when I get a special book. You know, Mark, we had a um, we do a, a competition every year for the, we call it the draft a dream competition. We, we, we want the manuscript. We don't want it's not for finished books. It's and because the, the grand prize winners will walk in with a um, with a prize that has uh, literally which, which comes in with a prize that they get their full design. They get their no. cover. They they get there, and I, in fact, I would love to have you as part of one of the the people who can do that. Be part of the the team that puts together the book of the one that awesome. went, you know. And if if Mark Graham Communications would consider doing like a cover and a cover and a design for that, but here's the one I just got the book in from one of the winners last year, and you know what? It's fabulous. It's fabulous. It looks, the book looks, the story's great. The author is really a, quite a good writer. And it, this was for the juvenile arena. And okay. um, the book, uh, the, the cover, her, her, actually her daughter did all the drawings, the animal drawings, and, uh, and, and they're fun. Whimsy, That's fun. And, and I'm looking at this cover um, that our friend Nick Zellinger did. He was also, exactly. you know, one of the people who supplies. He he was the one that I said, Nick, I think this book's for you, um, you know, because I divvy out where the winners go to that, I, which I think is the right fit for them. And um, sure. he, he did a great job on the layout. And I, I would, ma- you know, what I'd match it to any book that came out in New York, any book. Isn't that amazing? Is that fun? Well, you know, and I, and I think the thing about it is, is people need to know that there are vehicles for whatever type of book they write for for this to be published whether it's independent publishing or self-publishing or mm-hmm. if they pursue mainstream publishing i mean there are vehicles to get your book published in such a way that you know the quality is 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 top notch and it looks like a book that you know came like you say came out of new york and and we tell all of our you know all of our clients that that you will be published and and it will be done in a way that you're proud of. And, you know, it's the print book, it's the ebook, uh, it could be the audio book, you know, and all of those are pieces that, you know, we try to work with them on just as you do and take them through the whole process. So, you know, they don't just have a manuscript, they have a finished book and that's such an important you know, piece for them, obviously. And mm-hmm. that's one of the that's where the industry is now, and I think that's a you know that has a real plus side to it that you know you're going to have a really special book in print and you know uh, an electronic version of it as well. So uh, excited to see that particular book. I love it when somebody puts illustrations into their book and you know or they put a photo section into their uh, biography or their uh, memoir or, or you know illustrations into their business book. All of those things are really important pieces to the writing process, uh, you know, because they play into that finished piece and that's what you want for your client. And that is what we all want. All right. So I'm going to loop back here because I keep kissing it, but so we have these four to eight weeks, four four to eight months, this book comes together, um, hundreds of hours, hundreds of hours. So when, when you, let's say you're the, you're the ghostwriter, let's say you're the ghostwriter on this project. When you're working on it, are you working nonstop? Do you work on a couple of different books at a time? And how many hours really can you go put into a project in a day basis without feeling, my God, I've gone brain dead? Because I think this is really important for uh, authors to writers uh, uh, to be with their name is going to be on the book, but they didn't write the whole thing. They got help because my experience, Mark, is that I don't think that, uh, I, I mean, I don't think I know that many people don't put the value 
of of the work that gets produced and the hours that goes in, uh, yeah, and, and they don't want to pay for it. Yeah, I think well, then that's that's an interesting thing because it is a, it can be expensive and uh, and it, and yet it's it's an investment that we you know most people see the value in that investment. But what we try to do to answer your first question is we try to produce a chapter a week for uh, for our books and and. And so one of my members of my team might have uh, you know, two projects going or, or so at the same time, because you can only put in really, uh, you know, 10 to 15 hours a week on a project and to keep that energy going and that flow. And that's, you know, that's the number of people that can work full time on a book is, is pretty small. And we try to really, you know, say to a client, look, we're going to produce a chapter a week and we're going to send that to you so you can give us feedback on that, on the, on the book. And you can see the book coming together, but we make it really clear that, you know, uh, to stay fresh on a project, we only really try to put in, you know, maybe 10 to 15 hours a week on that project going forward. So, um, and that's just a matter of keeping the, you know, the writer and the team fresh and, and the concept fresh. So that's really what our model is. And, you know, when we give an estimate on a, on a project, we really do it on a per page basis and it's based upon the anticipated size of the book. And, you know, so a business book can be 140 pages, um, you know, 160 pages, something like that is fairly common for a business book. Whereas a novel, can run, you know, 200 pages, which is, you know, 60,000 words in that area, and it can run up to 300 pages. So it really depends on the, you know, on the, on the type of book really determines, you know, not only the, uh, the size of the book, but it also determines the cost of the book and so forth. And uh, biographies and memoirs are the same. They can run anywhere from 180 to 300 pages, depending on the, you know, the amount of information that we have you know, for that story and so forth. So, and mm-hmm. that's why a book takes, you know, four to eight months to write because, you know, you want to stay fresh on it. You want to stay, you know, really connected to it and that sort of thing too. All right. Well, so we're going to take one more break and then we're going to come back and let's just call it, let's talk dollars and cents and do that and that's- staying fresh because, you know, my experience is sometimes that people think that if I'm not having it, I had an author do this, one of my clients. If I, we're not having face-to-face meetings, why why do I have a bill for this? Well, I'm thinking, I'm working, I'm doing things. <laughs> that's it. That's it. We'll be right back. Yeah. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd.
One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask if you want to write and publish a book if you want to be successful as an author your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith briles All right, so it's ghost riding in the sky time. Let's talk the dollars and cents of it, Mark. So we, we've got it that your that your team they can spend anywhere from ten to fifteen hours a week, and and I really have to emphasize this for all your listeners that um, I and I was sharing with Mark um, why they are our fabulous sponsors for our radio show. Uh, they were running, and I encourage you; those people have all been vetted. I absolutely support them and the quality of what they do, and you would be in good hands if you worked with any of them. But I wanted to it, it, just share that it, it's very common, you know, I, when people work with me as a book shepherd, um, that we have a usually, even though it may come in for an hour to our consult, but usually they're on a monthly retainer as we work through their book. Um, and and whether it's the editing, it's the rewriting that has to be done, it's working with the team, whether it's working with like someone in Mark's area that where they might be doing the design and and some of that work within it or the ghosting that there's a lot of time that you that that clients never see me working on their book and one of the stories i shared with mark because i always write the back cover i always write the back cover copy for all my clients um, because i have a more of a marketing bent to the way i think and I'm always looking for the seduction of a headline and the lure to bring them in. And you need to think of your book cover. And I want Mark to jump in on this, too, that you, when you need to think of that back book cover, the copy on that back book cover is beside the cover is essential. That's the pick me up. Turn me right. over. See what's in. This is where this is your your major real estate. This is your sales copy. And it, if it's freaking boring your book is put down and they'll look for the next one that seduces them. So I'm looking to write the seduction copy. There you go. Well, you know, and I was telling you that the same thing goes for when you're writing a, you know, a synopsis for a book or whatever it happens to be. That's a very, it's a really difficult task to take a book or a story and, you know, distill it down into a paragraph or two paragraphs and do it in such a way that, you know, the reader is not only taken with the, the copy in the story, but they're willing to now open the book and, you know, take that next step. And and that sounds mm-hmm. simple, but it's really not. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's, an it's, it's an art form. Process. Yeah, it's an art it form. It really is. And sometimes it, really it takes is. me a while to pull it together. And I, I was sharing with Mark that I, I did a book called The Kabbalistic Journey, 
for a rabbi, and I literally carried his manuscript up and down my stairs for a week. <laughs> as, I love that. You know, and I and it and you know, I helped edit it. It was part of the flowing go through it, but I just had to get it together. I just had to let it, you know, let whether it's juju, good juju, let, let it flow through me. <laughs> that's right. So that's I right. But that's part of it, you know. You know, it's interesting because writing is one of those things where you you can't really wait for inspiration. I mean, you have to, you know, creativity is something sometimes you have to force and you have to you know, jump into it and, and then allow the inspiration and so forth to come along for the ride, if you will. And that's a big part of writing day to day. And, and that's why we try to produce a chapter or so every week for a client. So we're there producing that. And, you know, you just have to jump into it. And, you know, it, you can't sit, sit and wait for inspiration to happen. And sometimes you just have to force it. And that's what good writers do. Well, Yes, that's what they do. Okay, so let's talk about the real cost. A lot of time goes into sure. this. So if we if, if we have a say twelve chapter book, you're talking ten to fifteen hours per chapter, people per chapter. So we're talking anywhere from one hundred and twenty to one hundred and eighty hours. I want right. you to think. Of, I want you to think about your job. If you work a forty hour a week. Are you really working a 40 hour week or do you get paid for lunch? Right? Do you get paid for your breaks? We freelancers don't get paid for our lunch and we don't cave. We're talking 10 to 15 hours a week of hard nailed work. 10 to 15 hours a week. What do you get paid, really paid per hour for your actual work? I want you to really think about that. You know, this is really a kind of a come to book moment because Mark said it several times and I say it all the time. Publishing is an investment. Publishing is a business. And what you're doing and bringing all these components together is part of your business to be as an author. Whether you publish yourself or you go with a traditional publisher and you get picked up this way, I don't care. You're still going to have to do all this work to bring it together. And it's an investment. So right. if, if if you are making, uh, you know, 30 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour times 10 is how much? It's $900. Or no, right. Is it what I do? 30 Man, times 10. 300. Well, okay. That's $300. 300. Okay, so 300. Yeah. So 300 per chapter. If we have 12 chapters, what's the minimum going to be here? So, Mark, let's talk cost. And then add it yeah, in. We, we give an estimate that's on a per page basis. That's how we really do our our estimates, and and so and that can run anywhere from seventy five dollars a page to one hundred and ten dollars a page. Really, it depends on the nature of the of the book. This is for the full ghostwriting part of the project. So you know if you you know you can, you you're running you know if you've got a, a you know hundred page book and it's you know, eighty dollars a page. You know, you're talking about eight thousand dollars for that process and so forth. So uh, it really depends a little bit on the uh, what type of project it is um, and that sort of thing. But so that's how we give our estimates, and we just know how many hours is going to go into a book like you know whatever the type of book is. Now, developmental editing and that sort of thing. That's obviously. Uh, you know, a less expensive process, but even that can run, you know, uh, 20 to $40 a page. So we really try to be really open and honest about what that takes and so forth, because as, as a professional writer, you know, you can't really dial back the creativity. You really want it to be the best it can be. And that's always the goal that we have. And, you know, my team is a group of highly published people and whichever one of those people join me on a project. I mean, we give, you know, that full creative energy to a project and so forth. And, you know, that's what you can really guarantee your client is that they're going to get a really special book and, and that sort of thing. And yes, it is going to be an investment of, of time and money and so forth. So, uh, do you think that kind of answers your question a little bit? All right. So let's get, you know, what's the dollar range, the real dollar range you would see coming in? 
Well, I mean, it can be for, uh, you know, a biography. We're talking mm-hmm. about anything from 15000 to $30,000. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that's how much it costs to do a, you know, that's eight months of work. And, you know, you need to be prepared for that and that sort of thing. And, you know, that's everything from, you know, the actual writing of the book to the interview process, you know, uh, and, and all of that sort of thing, transcriptions, you know, reviewing and and putting together an outline, all of those pieces go into it. And then it's a lot. Yep. And then I'm not, not, well, no, I'm not saying really it's a lot of money. It's a lot of work that goes into this. So basically what you're talking about is someone is going to dedicate a humongous amount of creativity and time that's going to range from anywhere from, uh, you know, a quarter of their year to maybe three quarters of the year or could longer to get yeah. the perfect book together. So I, I just want everyone to get an idea of this is, it, it is not something that you're going to go into It's for a few hundred bucks and you're in, you know, I, I don't, you're on drugs if you're doing that. So if, if you are, <laughs> I, I, I think it's just, That's really, true, I'm I, I just think it's really important to understand that you basically are hiring somebody to do this work. Now, you're thinking about, well, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I'm saying, okay, if this is where you're going to go, which I think is a good idea for some people to do that sure. for a variety of reasons. Maybe there's they just need to keep the thing, the ball rolling here. And they have other books and they're out promoting the other books. Because one of the things that's very important for authors is to realize you can't be a one book pony. And that's important to have new material. And if you can create a team effort, they can already start working. He or she can start working on, okay, here's where we can go with next in the series. Or here's how you can repurpose this and take it this way. So it keeps you fresh in the area. Meanwhile, guess what you can do, dear author? You can work on your marketing strategy and your marketing plan and get going so when the book is ready to birth you you are running you are running not exhausted which i think is a cool thing (laughs) well you know and we're we're always you know i mean commercial viability is a real key component to any book we write whether it's a you know we want to write a memoir that has some commercial viability to it and that's part of you know creating that appropriate voice and tone and style and the pacing Mm -hmm. and the flow all of those things i mean so we're we're thinking about what kind of book can we write that actually has, you know, a potential to sell. And then, exactly. Cause that's the whole idea. I mean, you want people to have your book in their hands and that means getting exposure for the book and, and pay for all it. of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you want to, you know, you, you want a book I and mean, we've sold mm-hmm. books that have sold 70,000 copies, you know, isn't that and, fun? And we, Mark, we're going to, ha- I hate yeah. to cut you off. We are at the end. So I want to tell everyone how to get a hold of you. Mark Graham communications.com. And if you have any questions, call 303-777-4155. So that's Mark Graham communications.com. Check out the website. It's terrific. Mark, thank you so much. Thank you, Judith. It's been a pleasure. Part of really your guide it. to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, 